Good afternoon. My name is Tyler and I am one of the campus managers on the university relations team at Eaton. I sit out of our corporate office in Cleveland, Ohio. And I've been on the team for a couple of years and I see quite a bit of resumes every day and I have quite a bit of experience reviewing resumes. And so I wanted to take just a few moments today to talk about resume best practices, what a recruiter looks for, and how you can stand out on a resume. So there's quite a bit that goes into a resume and it can seem a little daunting at first. Um, first and foremost, at the top of the page, you should have your contact information. It doesn't need to have your address. Oftentimes college students might be living on campus, but are open to relocation. And maybe you're thinking, do I put my home address versus my school address? Just your current city is fine. And you can also put a section at the top for open to relocation or um, in your objective statement, you can say something like, Current junior studying mechanical engineering at the you know, Swanson School of Engineering at the University of Pittsburgh, looking for summer 2024 internships in the Pittsburgh or surrounding areas. Right. So having an objective statement at the top of the resume can be helpful for recruiters to know what you're looking for. I know it can be a, a hot topic sometimes, and if you ask different people, you might get different opinions on if you should have an objective statement or not. My opinion is that it's very helpful, especially for those like yourself that are most likely early in career and looking for an internship or a full-time position. It will just let recruiters know, hey, even though I have not, not a lot of experience and I'm still in school, I'm still looking for a position in XYZ, right? So having that statement is very helpful, especially for those that are in your position and early in career. Um, LinkedIn, if you, don't, if you don't have a LinkedIn, I encourage you to create a LinkedIn and that's a big component of your personal brand, right? Your resume is just one component and LinkedIn can supplement that. I would then incorporate a link to your LinkedIn profile at the top of your resume. So usually you can have first name, last name, email address, phone number, your current city, and then your LinkedIn profile URL. After the objective statement, which again can be short and sweet, it can just be a sentence. So it can just be current student studying this, looking for a role in XYZ, right? So it can be one line. I would then do an education section. So because you're early in career and looking for, you know, again, your first internship or full time position, many companies are going to require um, a GPA requirements, certain classifications. So if you're a junior versus senior, certain major, right? A lot of the a lot of times those are specific requirements for jobs, again, especially for early in career positions. I would have an education section at the top. I would have your current GPA, as again, that's usually a requirement. List out your major um, and then your graduation date. Even if that changes, that helps us know what year in school you are and what you're looking for. When it comes to listing out all the specific coursework that you may have taken, I think it's okay to leave it on there for now. Um, but my personal opinion is if you're a computer engineering major, and you're applying to a role that, that requires that degree, it's just implied that you've taken the courses, that you have a decent foundational knowledge of computer engineering, right? So unless you see on the job description that you're applying to that must have taken courses in XYZ, I would then highlight those. Otherwise, to save space on the resume, you may be able to remove um, coursework from that education section. Next is work experience. Many companies do require that you've had previous internship or co-op experience. Even if you're not sure if you've had an internship, maybe talk to your former supervisor. If you can incorporate that on the resume, 
But, but even if you don't, that's okay. Any experience is still valuable experience. So if you are the shift manager at McDonald's off campus, so put that on there, right? That shows that you're a hard worker, you can manage your time, you can multitask, um, all that is important. So any work experience that you have is going to be valuable. If you're a first year or second year and you wanna pull in high school work experience, that's okay. But as you get closer to graduation and you've had some work experience in college, you will want to remove any high school or, or middle school, right, work experience or volunteering. Quantify where you can. So even though you're early in career and may not have a ton of experience, if you're able to use numbers and metrics on your resume wherever possible, right? That just shows that you are a data-oriented thinker, you're a metric-oriented individual, and you're very goal-oriented, right? So. How many people did you work with at that company? How much money did that project that you worked on, that you worked on, save the company? How was your performance measured, right? So hopefully you worked on something in your internships, um, and then you're showing the result of that, right? So where you can quantify, recruiters are not going to be able to, <laughs> to verify this, but, but you have to be able to speak to it in an interview. So definitely keep that in mind. But numbers, you can't go wrong. Very, very impressive to any recruiter or hiring manager. Next, I would have a section for extracurriculars, or I've seen this classified as leadership, or maybe a, a section for both, depending on how much space you have. Um, here's where you want to list all of your student organization involvement, maybe even honors awards that you've received. Maybe you attended a special leadership workshop, right? All of that could fall under this extracurriculars or leadership type section. Maybe you volunteered in the community or did a mission trip or a 10 day abroad program that could be located here as well. And oftentimes just a one sentence uh, bullet, you know, is all you need, right? You, you don't need to need a paragraph explaining each of these items. You can talk to that in an interview. Next, I've seen a section for academic projects. Um, for those who especially don't have a bunch of work experience, that'd be a great time to highlight your academic projects that you've been involved in. That can also go at the top of the resume below education. I don't think it really matters, but you can certainly highlight any projects and results, right? Keeping in mind uh, quantifiables if you can. Your resume really should be one page, um, especially for those that are just graduating, right? Looking for an internship or a full time opportunity. It really should be one page. Um, recruiters don't want to be dealing with multiple pages, and it's not expected that you would have that much experience based on where you're at in your career. Um, with that being said, I'm OK if you have one default master resume. That lists out all of your experience that you want to articulate. And then as you're applying to a specific job, I would encourage you to kind of tweak that resume and keep saving as and saving additional copies of the resume. This is important for multiple reasons. One, um, you want to keep track of all of your experience, even if it is appearing to be more than one page, and then tweaking that as you go. But more importantly, if you're applying to a job, they might say, again, must have taken coursework in XYZ, must have experience in Python or C++, right? And so you might want to bring to attention or call out different experiences that you have, different skill sets that you have, depending on the job you're applying to. This is very important in this day and age with different AI and different types of like chatbots that are you know parsing through your resume um, and the applications asking you questions do you have this experience do you do you you know have this skill set oftentimes if you say no or if they don't see those buzzwords on your resume you won't even be considered and the, and the recruiter won't even see your resume so make sure that you're matching up the job descriptions that you're applying to and then if you can you're incorporating those buzzwords onto the resume so the system knows that you do meet all of those qualifications. 
Um, unless you're applying to a very creative type role, I would you know still encourage you to keep the resume pretty simple. So black and white font. I've seen a little bit of color with different headings, but I would keep it pretty minimal. You know, maybe blue, but I would really stick to that black. You can't go wrong with being simple and clean. And then last thing, anything on your resume is going to be fair game. So you don't need to explain every detail of your work experience and, and, and what you've worked on um, on your resume. So short and sweet, think bullet point format, but definitely be able to talk to whatever's on your resume in an interview and be able to expand on that. So the resume is just what gets you a foot in the door, right? And, and what makes you stand out. At that point, it's up to you to really shine in the interview and take that to the next level. So that's it for today. Again, my name is Tyler Gould with Eaton, part of the campus recruiting team, and, and best of luck this academic year. You will certainly be seeing myself and Eaton on campus quite a bit. And we hope that you consider Eaton and our early talent program opportunities. Thank you.